Sing Yu is a lonely, poor scriptwriter with no job, no friends, and dead parents. His main problem, however, is that he hasn't been able to sleep in over half a year because every time he does, a demon appears in his dreams and transforms them into violent nightmares. Tonight, Sing Yu is dreaming about being in the subway when the demon arrives, grabs him by the hair, and, after making a hole on the floor, puts his head through it, killing him. He wakes up right after his dream self dies and intends to do some writing, but his landlord knocks at his door, claiming he's brought him some food, but Sang Yu escapes through the window because he doesn't have the rent money. As he walks the streets, he remembers all the experts he's visited on the subject of dreams, psychologists, doctors, scientists, religious devotees, and the like. They all had different theories on what dreams do and can mean, but nothing concrete could help him in any way. He stops at a food stand and asks for a crepe with no eggs because that's all that he can afford, but the crepe man adds an egg anyway as a free treat. While he waits for his meal to be done, he watches the cafe across the street where Huar, the girl he has a crush on, works. He met her years ago when he was hanging out at a bar with some friends, and she was there playing with her band. Her singing voice was beautiful, and he has been thinking about her since then. Once his crepe is ready, Sang Yu sits down to enjoy it, but he's suddenly startled by San Ji Yi, his manager. Sang Yu starts running away and drops his crepe on the way, but he's too weak to go too far, and San Ji Yi eventually catches him. He takes him to a restaurant, where he makes him watch as he eats, scolding him for not respecting his contract and not handing in a script on time. Sang Yu tries to explain that his insomnia doesn't allow him to concentrate and write, but San Ji Yi doesn't listen and demands that the script be done in 10 days. Afterward, Sang Yu returns to his apartment only to find it locked and all his stuff in the hallway, his landlord has finally kicked him out. He goes to a cafe to see if he can get some writing done there, but he's too hungry to think, and he ends up falling asleep. The demon appears behind him then, puts his chains around Sang Yu's neck, and starts banging his head on the table. Once again, Sang Yu wakes up in the morning right after his dream self dies and discovers his laptop has been stolen. Having lost his work tool and starting to feel like he can't tell nightmares apart from reality, Sang Yu sends San Ji Yi a message telling him he'll kill himself and reunite with his parents. He chooses the roof of the building across from Huar's cafe and watches her as he steps onto the edge, ready to jump, but the crepe man interrupts him by offering him free food. The man joins him on the roof, and while Sang Yu eats, he tells him about people's different views on death and dreams and reaches a simple conclusion, when Sang Yu is having these nightmares, he should tell himself I'm dreaming to be able to get out of them faster. Sang Yu stays on the roof watching Huar until night falls, then he sells his cell phone in order to get some money to buy food. He goes to a convenience store, where he considers stealing some things but changes his mind when he notices he's being watched. The food he purchases is eaten outside the store, where Sang Yu is shocked to be suddenly approached by Huar, who shows concern for him. This is too good to be true, and Sang Yu quickly sees why, Huar is actually the demon, who starts pushing him against the glass this, to the store clerk, looks like Sang Yu is having some kind of panic attack. The demon picks up Sang Yu, and as he stabs him with his sword, he throws him through the window. Sang Yu holds onto the sword as he remembers the crepe man's advice and reminds himself that he's dreaming, which allows him to wake up right in the middle of being thrown. In real life, he's also flying through the shattered glass, and while he isn't stabbed, he mysteriously finds the demon's sword in his hands. He runs away before the ambulance the clerk called for arrives, and he stays at the park all night, examining the sword and making sure he isn't dreaming again. In the morning, he goes to the flea market to sell it, and all the buyer's eagerness to buy makes him realize he has something valuable in his hands. So instead, he decides to go to a pawn shop, where they pay him the sword's actual value, 20,000. Sang Yu wastes no time and starts spending it, he gets a new computer, eats at a nice restaurant, and stays at a fancy hotel. When night falls, he takes some sleeping pills and waits for his usual dream to kick in. This dream is also happening in the hotel, so he leaves his room and explores the hallway, grabbing a vase and saying, I'm dreaming, but nothing happens. He decides to explore a little more, and that's when the demon appears, chasing after him with a giant gold axe. The demon hits him with his weapon and tosses him around, causing quite a number of injuries, but after a few hits, Sang Yu manages to grab the axe and says, I'm dreaming. Once again, he wakes up with the weapon in his hands and no wounds to be seen. The axe is sold at the same pawn shop, 
and the money is immediately spent again, saying you gets nice clothes, a new car, and spends the night drinking with some women at a bar. When he returns to his hotel room, though, he doesn't let them come inside with him, he just gives them money for a cab before going to bed. Tonight he's trying a new trick, he looks at pictures of an important museum in a book before falling asleep, and the trick works because the dream happens in the same exact place he saw in the photographs. Sang Yu looks around, admiring all the antiques, before sitting to wait for the demon to arrive. This time it arrives with a firearm, which goes against his plan. Sang Yu begins running and dodging the bullets, but eventually the demon catches up with him and kills him. Sang Yu wakes up in his hotel bedroom, but since he didn't manage to grab anything, he doesn't want to leave the job unfinished, so he swallows a sleeping pill. Back in the dream, he begins running again, and after dodging a couple of bullets with a particularly exceptional jump, he grabs two antiques before saying, I'm dreaming, and waking up. This time, Sing Yu takes the treasures to professional antique dealers that do business with rich collectors. He gets two million for them and some questions about his methods, but thankfully he manages to dodge them all. When he's leaving the shop, he's approached by an angry San Ji, who had thought he was dead. Sang Yu invites him to eat at a fancy restaurant and pays him back the money he had given him for the script, telling him he doesn't write anymore. The next day, he finally enters Huar's cafe, and after ordering a latte, he asks her if she recognizes him, but she doesn't. He also asks her why she's selling the cafe, and she explains it's because she has no clients and the shop only creates debt. Later at night, Sang Yu gets drunk while having dinner with San Ji Yi, who wants to know the secret to his success. San Ji Yi takes Sang Yu back to his hotel room, and after putting him in bed, he pretends to leave, only to come back and look at Sang Yu's wallet and checkbook. He's suddenly startled when Sang Yu wakes up with gold chains in his hands, and now that he knows the secret, he begs his friend to let him help him with this new business of his, which Sang Yu considers for a while. The following day, Sang Yu buys Huar's cafe and tells her he still wants her to run it. They can share the earnings, but he'll be in charge of covering the losses. To show how grateful she is, she invites him to dinner, where they discuss their new shared business, and Huayar expresses her suspicions of Sang Yu wanting more out of this deal than just money. From then on, Sang Yu goes on regular dream adventures while San Ji Yi protects his sleeping body. Some of his dreams include, for example, robbing a bank, where he shows how much control he's learning to have over his powers, he's starting to fight the demon back, and he can move objects around with his mind. He also starts bringing bigger objects back, like a red car. Sometime later, Huar's cafe is full of clients because Sang Yu has sent San Ji Yi to pay people on the streets to come. He's also left a bag of money for the crepe man as a thank you for the times he's shared a free meal with him. After the shop closes, Sang Yu goes for a walk with Huar, who guesses based on only a few words that he's a scriptwriter. Sang Yu begins to walk her home every day after work, and one night, he lets her drive the red car from his dream, which he tells her is for her. Such fortune makes her assume he's a very famous scriptwriter. While she drives through the night, Sang Yu remembers the day he met her, after her show, he saw her crying after a fight with her ex, and afterward, he followed her to the movies a couple of times. Sang Yu decides to take her to the movies in the present, which Huar accepts, but it also makes her wonder when they'll get to see a movie he wrote. Not wanting to be caught in his lie, Sang Yu writes a script for real and gives it to San Ji Yi to read while he dreams. Since Huar is constantly on his mind, he dreams about being in bed with many copies of her, so he forces himself to wake up pretty quickly, only to find San Ji Yi crying at how good the script is. Their plan begins then, they sell the script to a movie company, offering them their own money to hire the biggest stars and make a huge success out of it. They even create a special dinner event to commemorate him, and he takes Huar as his plus one. There's even a special presentation that goes over his career, which of course is made up, claiming he wrote many successful movies but didn't take credit for them because he wanted to travel and see the world. A couple of days later, during a dream, Sang Yu discovers something very peculiar, there's the body of a monk meditating, and when he tries to take his belt, his hand disintegrates. He doesn't give up, though, so once his hand is back, he tries again. As he removes the belt from the monk, the man moves to touch his chest with two smoking fingers, but Sang Yu doesn't look too worried about it. The usual demon doesn't show up, and the treasure and the monk disintegrate too. One night, Sang Yu takes Huar to the roof, where he almost kills himself and shows her a firework show he's prepared especially for her. When she wonders if he'll ever disappear in the same sudden way he showed up, he promises her he'll never let her. 
Afterward, they go to her apartment, and while she refreshes herself in the bathroom, sang -Yu practices a possible confession. However, he finds himself having to leave because suddenly, there is something hitting him on the chest, and when he checks it in the mirror, he sees two smoking black lines on his skin. Once he makes it to his place, he ignores the party Sanji -E is having with a bunch of women and goes directly to bed. Sanji -E gets ready to collect tonight's treasure, but Sang Yu tells him it's not necessary, this time he's sleeping alone. The dream makes him appear in a tall, empty building with a mysterious figure waiting on the balcony. Sang Yu comes closer and discovers it's a version of his older self that is now disintegrating. When he wakes up, he discovers he has a new scar on his shoulder, and more scars show up as hours pass all of them matching a spot where the demon had hurt him in previous dreams. The following morning, he goes to see the crate man to see if he has any more advice, but when he's about to arrive at his destination, a van appears next to him and kidnaps him. When they finally remove the bag from his head, Sang Yu discovers he's at an abandoned building surrounded by a gang of criminals, whose leader is Chang Ji Yi. Sang Yu tells them he'll pay whatever they want, and after agreeing on 10 million, he calls Sang Ji Yi and asks him to bring the money over. When he arrives, though, Chang Ji Yi's men take the money and San Ji Yi him as well, who Chang Ji Yi uses to negotiate. Not having any other choice, Sang Yu takes the whole group back to his apartment together with an unconscious San Ji Yi, where he shows them his hidden room with all his antiques. While Chang Ji Yi tries to make him confess how he's obtained all these rare items, someone arrives at the building to see him, it's War. The receptionist announces her arrival through the intercom, so Sang Yu dumps her right there to get her to leave for her own safety. Seeing how upset this makes her, the receptionist tells her Sang Yu's door is still open for some reason and lets her go up anyway. As soon as she comes out of the elevator, one of the thugs captures her and takes her to the same spot where they're keeping Sang Yu. Chang Ji Yi starts teasing her, trying to get under her skin by pointing out that Sang Yu has been lying, and this is received with disapproval from another one of his men, who thought they would only come to grab some money. As punishment for his indiscretion, Chang Ji Yi puts on some golden knuckles and beats him up, while San Ji Yi secretly begins to wake up. When Qian Ji Yi turns to Huar next, she kicks him in self-defense, and that's the chance that San Ji Yi takes to jump in with a vase he uses to hit the man holding her down. Sang Yu bites the thug holding him and manages to escape, but not without getting stabbed first. The three of them run away while Chang Ji Yi shoots the man he beat up, but it's hard to go far when Sang Yu can barely walk because of his wounds. The men catch up with them on the stairs, and one of them manages to stab Sang Yu again, but Sang Ji Yi sacrifices himself by staying behind and distracting the thugs while Sang Yu and Hua escape. Only one normal man isn't enough to go against two trained men, though, so Sang Ji Yi is beaten to death. One of the thugs manages to capture Sang Yu and Hua upstairs beating them up and tossing them around without even caring that Sang Yu stabs his back with a dagger. The two of them pass out, and Sang Yu suddenly finds himself in some mysterious ruins, covered in a black substance that quickly goes away when he starts moving. After looking around, he touches a glowing door arch and starts seeing a flashback of his life the last few months, including both real life and dreams, and even a version of him that was taken by the ambulance that night outside the convenience store. When that's over, he walks to an area with a giant crystal wall, which he starts hitting as he repeats I'm dreaming, over and over until he passes out from blood loss. Suddenly, his body starts transforming, and Sang Yu finds himself becoming the demon. With the machete that appears in his hand, he starts hitting the crystal wall while picturing himself as the demon in various conversations that already happened, but giving them a twist, instead of sitting there and listening, in these versions he imagines, he hits his landlord and San Ji Yi for not being nicer to him. When the wall finally breaks, the demon comes out in Sang Yu's living room, where Sang Yu's body is waking up as well. The demon kills all the thugs without hesitation, even making his strange firearm appear when necessary. Then he comes after Sang Yu, ready to kill him as well, but he mumbles, I'm dreaming, and all the antiques he's brought from dreams start disappearing, both in his apartment and in the rich people's collections. Sang Yu falls unconscious yet again, and when he wakes up, he finds himself all the way back in the night outside the convenience store. Huar finds him and remembers him from the concert, so she feels pity for him and takes him to her place to give her some real food. While he eats some noodle soup, she tells him she's read a story of his in a magazine and thinks it was very good, he just needs a bit of luck to make a breakthrough. Until then, she offers him to work at her cafe, which causes him to break down and start crying while it is revealed that all this time, Huar has always known he's been watching her. 
Sometime later, while they're working at the cafe, Huar gives Sang Yu a gift, a brand new laptop for him to write on. Afterward, Sang Yu meets with San Ji Yi at a restaurant to give him back his money because he can't write a script on demand, he only wants to write what he wishes to write. Not only does San Ji Yi turn down the money, but he gives him more in return because he's managed to sell one of Sang Yu's old scripts. To celebrate, Sang Yu is the one who will cover their bill. Many days later, now content with his life, Sang Yu goes to see the crate man to order some food, so the man takes the chance to give him back his money and shows him a scar on his stomach because he used to have the same power as well and learned this humble life is preferable. As Sang Yu listens to his story, the ruins from his last dream appear behind him, and it's revealed that the new demon that killed the thugs has been following him since he reappeared at the convenience store. The movie ends here. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a comment to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.